here, as SO say thousand cars, and today is going to be a good day. We're going up to Hatfield to take out for 48 hours a Porsche Panamera, so that could be quite exciting. I must admit, I've got to be honest, I am quite looking forward to this because I think especially the inside of the new Panamera is absolutely incredible. Now, we are thinking about buying one of the Panameras and one of the things I'm really quite keen to do is to look at the hybrid market. So what I'd be doing is buying a Porsche Panamera hybrid. I want to see if some of the claims that the manufacturers actually make do bear out in real life because I think if you look at some of the stats it would tell you that they are going to give you 140 miles per gallon or 150 miles per gallon which is always I mean not to put too fine a point on, on it is clearly completely ludicrous so I think it does make a difference as to how long your journeys are so if you can run on the electric power only which apparently gives you 31 miles but in real life I bet you anything it doesn't and get it back to your house so it can be charged electrically then I think you probably can attain some quite high overall MPGs but you know I've, I've read reports that says in the real world it's sort of 3940 which I rather suspect will be very similar to the figures that you get with the diesel Further down the road, having picked up the car at Hatfield, and we're in the Panamera 4S, and it is quite a machine. I mean, it's a techno feast in here. Absolutely everything is touch button. I've never seen so many controls. Okay, so we're gonna make our way. Now the first thing that you feel about this, it's quite a big car. Um, now, from previous experience, and a bit like with the Ferrari FF, this car shrinks around you when you're driving it fast. But since I've literally only just got in it, I have to be honest with you and say that it feels sizable. But, you know, that's quite a nice feeling as well because we want this as an everyday car. So we're going to take it up to London later today and we'll give our thought give you our thoughts on how it drives and you know it's nice. It's nice. First impressions are, are fantastic, especially I think in an everyday car. What is quite important is the dash and the controls and this is lovely. I mean it's got a huge sat nav screen. Um, I'll show you this all a little bit later. I'm just going to straighten the camera. I'll show you all this a little bit later, but it's um, it's just fantastic. You won't get lost in this anyway. Wow. And you also have the, the capability, actually in all Porsches, but it's slightly bigger here. You can pull your sat-nav up onto the the binnacle in front of you so whereas if you take the GT4 or the Caymans and the 911s you have a sort of a single screen that uh, shows you the uh, shows you the um, an electronic readout of your uh, your sat nav but here where there are normally five dials they're all electronic these days except for the central rev counter which obviously is always keeps itself in the rev counter position but the two dials on either side of the rev counter you can now configure to show the uh, to show whatever information you want I suspect I, I bet you it's highly configurable and we'll we'll play with that later you'll have to excuse me I don't particularly want to play with it whilst I'm driving but wow this is this is really really good I mean you know I've always I love my supercars, but actually, do you know something? I absolutely adore 
my my top-notch saloons as well especially if they are configured to be sporty and you know the Porsche range is a sporty range and this car is beautifully put together that's one of the things I like about Porsche um, it's just well put together and it's luxurious it has the carbon fiber on the uh, center binnacle and around the doors and on the binnacle in front of you it uh, looks like I think I'm sorry if I said has the full leather pack um, so you've got leather on the dash you've got leather on the doors um, doesn't have the Alcantara roof which I quite like and it doesn't have a sunroof a panoramic sunroof um, but other than that it's a really well configured figured piece of equipment I had a very 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 brief guide around the car before I got it um, so although some of it is fairly normal for me so I'm I'm there or thereabouts in terms of how it all looks I have to be honest with you and say that um, I'm not completely up to speed with this this is a, a step up I'd say in terms of sophistication electronic wizardry and sophistication now I've never actually been wildly excited about uh, touch buttons so instead of having buttons on the center console and on the dash it's all sensitive to your touch and I think I've said that when the car is bouncing up and down sometimes if you have to go into one of the menus to get yourself to activate the heated seat for example there's no question at all it's not as easy as just pushing a button but I've also said I actually do think the, uh, the touch button stuff looks absolutely superb and my goodness this is an impressive cabin I do like this wow the old Panamera used to be turbo was V8, V8 and Panamera 4S was V8 but I think I think it may well be that they're twin turbo sixes now I, I'll have to check that for you yeah 2.9 V6 twin turbo though not naturally aspirated anymore all the Porsches these days are twin turbo as far as I can ascertain kicking out about 450 brake it would be my estimate maybe 460 HP and um, 450 brake horsepower of that ilk wow I do like the driving position is nice too it really feels one of the things I do like I mean you, and you never get this in a sports car is that is sometimes when you're um, you're not racing around it is so nice just to be able to sit back and feel completely cosseted in a car and of course this has four-wheel drive so if you put a set of all-weather tyres on it, then really you can go anywhere in this car. And we're doing 72 at the 71 at this point in time, and there's no noise from anywhere in the car. It's just lovely. Has the um, slightly larger diameter steering wheel than the GT4, um, because it's I assume because it's a big car, but it's designed again based upon the 918 Spider, and it's just lovely, lovely, lovely feel. Um, you've obviously got uh, controls on the steering wheel, unlike the GT4, which has absolutely nothing. But ironically, the 918 Spider also has controls on the steering wheel. Oh, this is a, this is a machine. Loving it already. Wow. Yes, I've just heard I've got it for three days. So that'll be a good, a good opportunity to try it out, see whether it's for me. Uh, have it in London actually both today and tomorrow, which is good. And um, I just, I'm enjoying it already and I've only been in it five minutes. I imagine in town, that the size is going to be a tad intimidating. It'd be interesting to see, but you know, just off the top of my head, I reckon, I reckon it's going to be a tad intimidating. Now the outside is metallic silver, and it's got black, black 21 inch rims, which I think sets the car off nicely. And there's no question at all, although I did like my Panamera Turbo, I always thought the looks weren't perfect. You know, they it was almost like they had a car that wasn't quite designed perfectly. It could have been so much better. And this version 
is the version that's so much better. So the lights, for example, they're much smoother, much nicer in the latest version of the Panamera than they are in the, the old Panamera. It's an eight-speed auto box, so, you know, at uh, 70 miles an hour, we're doing about one and a half, not even one and a half thousand reps. So it should be quite economical as well, despite the fact that it's a, um, it's quite a powerful car. It really is a car that you just sort of settle into. But yes, it has sporting pretensions. So if you push the sport button on the center dash, it firms up the dampers and really feels nice. I mean, you're never going to be a GT4 around uh, the country lanes, this, but uh, it's very, very nice to drive. And I think, you know, sometimes one of the things that perhaps I miss in the, uh, in the collection of cars that we have is we've tended to focus a little bit on the overly sporty stroke, stroke track stuff. And I think we're going to try and do some specific areas that I think of interest to people, which is why, as I said earlier, we're going to start with the hybrids. Now, I appreciate this isn't a hybrid, but this is really to give me a feel for whether or not the car is too big when driving in London on a regular basis. So, assuming that it's not, I think that the uh, the hybrid version of this, which, which has no tax whatsoever in terms of road fund tax, it may well be the machine to go for. So, um, you know, it's one of those things that from where I live, if I then switch the uh, switch over into the electric mode um, around the end of the A3, so the Robin Hood roundabout maybe up to the Roehampton traffic lights, at that sort of area, you should be able to do your entire journey on electric power until you get back to that point when you're on your way home. So driving in London itself is going to be emission free which I think is a great idea now we all know it's not completely emission free because the electricity that's stored has to be generated from somewhere but you know these days as you may be aware 46% of our electricity comes from renewables so wind farms and the like and as a consequence that's higher than I thought as a consequence of that a lot of the electricity produced is clean electricity so it's quite exciting and um, I hope you can see with the wide angle lens there an idea of what the dash is like because I think it's just fantastic. All right guys, well this has been a good sort of first experience video and there'll be a few more as you know with me so sort of covering the, the, um, the electronics in the car, the infotainment centre, how you can adapt the, the front binnacle to suit your own requirements and just generally living with the car for the three three days three to four days that i have it um, we'll find out fairly soon uh, what i think of it all right guys ian from ss8000 cars please make sure you subscribe signing off thanks a lot